Hope you guys don't mind that I put a little bit of less effort into the Sunday videos than the Thursday ones, or if you can tell. I do have a uh, mascara on because I left the house this morning. I'm um, at my day that I'm at home and the baby is napping. I have her on the video monitor down here, so I'm going to try to make this quick. But today's video is um, about all the stuff that nobody told me about breastfeeding before I started doing it. And um, so for expectant mothers and new moms out there to know, I guess, my, one person's perspective of the things that I've learned um, that I did not expect would be part of it. So let's go. Uh, first thing, you'll do skin to, hopefully you'll get a chance to do skin to skin with your baby in, um, you know, right after the baby's born, or in my case, I actually got skin to skin in the OR because there was a C-section. Um, so we were able to do a few minutes in the OR before she had to be taken off to be put in, uh, to be warmed up before, while I was getting stitched up. Um, and then, uh, we did skin to skin in recovery and she was like latched and nursing in recovery. And everyone kept saying, okay, that's good. That's good. Like, you know, um, the, the nurse who was trying to get her latched, like, I figured that she knew what she was doing and she, I mean, she does, right? But like the labor and delivery nurse is probably not the lactation consultant and you don't have to necessarily trust that they know what a good latch is. And basically what no one told me is your skin to skin latch is probably not going to be great. Um, like it was already hurting a little bit. She was basically... Um, it was for the skin to skin and like the very first latch is just sort of, it's almost less nutritive and less about, I, I don't know the point of it all and I'm no scientist and I'm no doctor. Um, but just like, don't assume that just because like it technically worked, um, at the very beginning, that doesn't mean that that's the best form to continue because things are going to start hurting within the next 24 to 48 hours if you don't correct that latch really quick. Um, so basically I would insist on seeing a lactation consultant before you leave the hospital. We didn't get to see one until well, we, uh, I didn't get to see one until the morning before we left. So that was already uh, almost two days after the baby was born. And by then a lot of damage had already been done. I um, already had like scabs and chap nipples and uh it was just you know i was in a decent amount of pain um and she was able to help me figure out ways to kind of correct the latch and, and get it better um if i had had that a day earlier uh it would have been really helpful <laughs> because um figure you want to figure stuff out before night two um the first night like the baby's still tired from her ordeal. You're tired from the ordeal and like everyone sleeps okay ish. You know, you're still waking up every two hours to feed the baby, but, um, she, she, or he will sleep in between. <laughs> um, night two is notoriously difficult for new babies. Um, they are a lot more fussy, a lot more cluster feeding. I spent, I think like four or five hours just like constantly feeding, like switching back and forth from one side to the other. And, I was so exhausted at that point from not sleeping much the night before, from having visitors and nurses and everybody just constantly. Um, I was dozing off as she was nursing and I was um, just like too tired to try to figure out what the correct thing was. It was just too much effort and work and to, to try to pull her up and relatch her every single time if it didn't feel right. So I ended up doing a lot of damage at night too. So that's my piece of advice. Figure it out before the second night. So if it's vaginal and you're only staying for a day, that means figure it out before you leave. If it's cesarean, make sure you figure it out that first day. Um, and then when you talk to the lactation consultant, like don't be afraid of doing, being like vulnerable um, and admitting that you're doing it wrong or like that you may not be doing it the best. Like I had gone to the class and I had watched the videos and read the articles and I had a pretty good idea of like what a latch is supposed to look like and how you're supposed to get there. And I was like, well, you know, we're managing, we're doing good. And I was trying to be like optimistic, but what it really ended up was like, I was saying things were fine when they could have been a lot better and it could have been easier. Um, so it's not all to say that it was the worst, you know, and I, have had a relatively easy experience of it. Um, most of my problems were resolved by two to three weeks. So that's one thing. Two to three weeks expected to be very difficult. Um, some people have worse problems than others, but if it's easy, 
like overall, expect it to still be difficult for the first two or three weeks. That doesn't mean that you're going to fail at breastfeeding if you're only doing, you know, if it's difficult for the first few weeks because it's that way for everybody. Um, I think even second time moms. So uh, the, let's see, I had never heard the term lipstick lipstick nips until uh, after I had them. <laughs> Basically, if you uh, if your baby unlatches and you have your nipples squeezed into sort of a lipstick shape, that means that you're not far enough in to her soft palate. Um, and that's something you want to fix. And I didn't know that at first. Um, you can scab, like I mentioned, there were actual like scabs on my nipples. They were all kind of that light brown color. You know when like you have a scab and then you go swimming or you take a, sh a bath and it gets kind of like a light brown color and kind of peels off? That kind of scab. Basically it was just constant trauma um, over and over again. One thing that you can do to fix, well, to alleviate some of the pain of constant nursing is to try different positions. So she's nursing in cradle and then you switch to football, then her, you're at a different angle so you're putting stress on different parts of the nipple, if that makes sense. Um, I should have packed, well I didn't, probably didn't need to because they gave them to me at the hospital, but use the gel pads, cool gel pads at the best thing, uh, because your nipples are going to be super sensitive and raw uh, for the first while, um, no matter what, and especially if they're in pain, the, the, the gel pads help so much, um, because also, uh, wear, ring or wear like a nursing camisole to the hospital because I was in just a hospital gown for like two days and it was fine it was great that I was able to like open it completely and nurse that way but I didn't have anything like up against me um keeping things from chafing basically and just the slightest touch uh it was like very painful because of all of the like nerve endings anyway with like hormones and learning how to breastfeed it hurts and then also it had been traumatic of you know all of the sucking and it hurt even more so having like just a, a camisole it doesn't have to be like a full padded bra um because your probably shapes are going to be weird anyway especially as your milk comes in uh let's see then the first trick that i don't think anyone taught me until the lactation consultant her lip was pulled in and so you just grab her chin and pull down and that can correct a lot of the problems that I was having um, and it's such a simple thing I feel like they should have taught me that in the nursing class it's just and then you're good because you want lips flared um, the top lip is a little harder but you can pull that up too uh, then yeah pain right like I said it can be like two or three weeks and the thing that no one likes to say everyone always says uh, you know if it hurts you're doing it wrong if it hurts unlatch relatch it's actually and other people will admit this if you force them to that it's actually perfectly normal to get real pain with a fine latch for like weeks um, my right boob was fine after I got into the swing of it maybe a yeah, about a week in, I was healed. I was getting better latches. We were, we were learning how to do it, and my right boob was fine. Lefty was excruciating for about 20 to 30 seconds every time she would latch on. And then it was fine. Um, and, yeah, I only when I, like, asked that question of the lactation consultant did she say, oh, yeah, 20 seconds, that's normal. Which, you know, it's it's not comforting in the moment, but knowing that it was going to happen, I just had to, like, deliberately unclench my jaw, take deep breaths, pray a memorare, and then I was okay. But um, that is normal. No one told me that. But it's normal for it to still hurt for weeks. Um, that went away about two, two and a half weeks in. Um, and now it's fine. Fortunately, thank goodness. Um... So then, oh, yeah, one thing no one ever told me, because the classes are all focusing on, like, the first week, the first couple days, like, first minutes of life. Um, but as you're getting weeks in, baby's getting better, um, at a stronger suck, she's getting better at getting milk out. Um, 
she'll kind of be able to actually correct her latch on her own uh, by about three weeks. I found that I was able to almost just get like the very tip in and she would suck it far enough in to where it needed to be on her soft palate. Um, and so it's a lot easier to latch because the baby knows what she's doing and has a stronger suck and can get everything in the right position without having to work quite as hard. No one told me that light was at the end of the tunnel. It is. <laughs> Babies are smart. And then the last thing, um, I was told about, you know, leaking. I was told to expect leaking as early as 20 weeks of pregnancy and uh, to you know, stock up on breast pads. And I'm definitely all about reusable pads. I hate this stuff with the adhesive and the weird chemicals and, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't like anything like that. So I uh, sewed all of my own breast pads and I asked my mom to help me because I was running short on time. She made a bunch. I ended up with like 20 pairs of breast pads. And there are some that I didn't actually end up using because for one thing, I didn't need that many because we're cloth diapering and I was using cloth postpartum pads. And so I was washing them every day anyway. So I'd maybe use like six on a, a bad leaky day. But the thing that nobody told me is that you actually stop leaking. Um, maybe six weeks, something like that. You start to regulate. Um, and around the time that you're not getting engorged as much, that you're not dealing with oversupply, um, you pretty much stop leaking. Sometimes I still leak a little bit overnight, um, but you know that's not like socially embarrassing because no one's there to see. And um, and even then, it's not every night. It's only once a week or so. Um, so yeah, you don't have to worry so much about the breast pads. You don't have to like budget that as an expense for the next two years. Um, it's not a big deal. So yeah. Basically, breastfeeding has been pretty good since we figured it out, and um, it's very convenient, and I can't imagine dealing with, uh, like, bottles when we're out and about and stuff like that. It's just so much easier. And um, also, hey, pumping at work is kind of nice to have, like, a 15-minute break twice a day. That's, that's a nice thing. Anyway, that's all I have for today. It's a little bit more Gabby than I usually tend to get, so I hope you enjoyed that. The background is my husband's desk and his collection of uh, figures and stuff. He's been working on painting models, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. See ya. Bye.